Let facts be submitted to a candid world. Hello and welcome to the People's Platform. I am your guest host today, Lolita Kelsey, and I am excited and honored to be able to sit down with Brother Charles Clemens, who is a candidate for the office of mayor in the city of Boston. Reading from Mr. Clemens' bio, uh, Charles Clemens is truly a Bostonian, having been raised in Roxbury in the Mission Hill uh, Mission Hill area on Annunciation Road. Uh, he grew up in Dorchester in the Four Corners area and also he lived on Rosetta Street. Uh, he is the, the oldest of five children and his mother taught him very early that he needs to be a leader, a protector, and be independent. At the age of 12, he opened his first business, a lemonade stand. He was at the age of 15 officially a disc jockey, calling himself CC, And then he coined himself CC, the, the master mix, mixer. <laughs> uh, Clemens is the co-founder of Touch 106.1 FM, the fabric of the black community. Uh, Touch 106.1 FM is the vehicle and platform that speaks to and for the people. Clemens has been the recipient of many awards, including Mayor Thomas Menino and the City of Boston African American Achievement Service Award for Community Service. Without any further ado, I welcome to the set Mr. Charles Clemens. Thank you for being here. It's my pleasure, Lolita. Thank you. It's been some time since we've gotten a, had a chance to sit down. Yes. And now I'm hearing all over Boston that your mayoral candidacy is um, gaining steam. It's so a movement. It's a movement. Yes. Okay, tell us about this movement that, you, um, that you're on right now that we should hear about. Well, first of all, um, Lolita, I say thank you for having me on the People's Platform. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always been um, about community. Um, as you stated, um, I was born um, in the city of Boston, City Hospital. I went to the Boston Public Schools. Uh, started, I've been an independent, um, an entrepreneur um, since the age of 15 years of age. Um, also, I have started many of businesses, um, employed thousands of people, um, inspired people, and I've, I've always put the community first. Uh, you know, I was always taught that when you when you start a business or when you go into business, uh, you don't go into business um, to make money. You go into business to provide a service. And I'm in the people business. And I just love my community. Well, we see, and, I, and I want the best for my community. <laughs> we see that in your action and in, and in your walk. So I, I like this show today to be able to feature and let people know exactly who you are and what you're about and what your office will look like when you become a mayor of the city of Boston. So tell us, how, what, when and how did you decide to make this bid? No, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I have seven uh, beautiful children, two mm -hmm. grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was dropping my daughter off at Howard University um, two years ago, who happens to be on the dean's list and in honors classes. So my beautiful daughter, Khadijah, congratulations, and I love you so much. Uh, you know, dropping her, going to Parents Week and, and watching the students at Howard University um, talk about how, what they're going to do for their community, what they're going to do while, while they're in school, inspired me. Inspired me to say, what can I do more? What can I do um, in my community? You know, I attended the Million Man March in 1995, and we took a pledge to come back to our communities and to do something, and I did. I came back and I joined um, organizations, and I got more involved in, this, in the Boston Public Schools with my children. Um, and then this was another point in my life where um, I, I had to do more for my community. And what could I do more? Well, you know, lead this community um, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And not saying that it's not going in the right direction, but to continue that leadership and to come from a different point of view. You know, I've always been taught that everybody's perception is their reality. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do receive, um, 
perceive is that it's time for some real change in our community. And just look at me, you could tell that I would be real change. Well, I know you're a progressive young man and uh, one that works really hard. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tell us some about your background uh, from being at DJ. I heard um, at one point you worked at WILD, yes, I believe I, it was. Yes, I was an intern at WILD in 1979, um, 78, 80. Um, I was actually one of the youngest music directors in the country where I would listen to music and, of course, submit it to the program director who would put it on the air. Um, I've always loved music. Um, I believe music is universal, and you, music can bring people together. Um, you know, from that, I've always been involved in the community. Again, you know, I was a Boston police officer yes. for 10 years. I was a correctional officer at the original Deer Island House of Correction. And I, and I chose those jobs because, one, I knew, I knew that I could um, learn mm -hmm. um, law, um, about the law. I could learn, uh, meet more, more people, mm -hmm. meet my friends that I grew up with and yeah. I couldn't find where, <laughs> where have they been. But also yeah. I could treat um, those um, behind the wall fairly. And, yes. I, and I always felt that that was needed um, in the correctional department and also in the police department to treat everybody fairly. We're all, we're all one and we should all be treated fairly. Absolutely. Now speaking about your career in, in corrections, uh, what were some of the conditions on the ground when you were back in the 70s or 80s? Well, I was a, I was a correctional officer in the 80s and there's always been an issue of you know, being overcrowded, and that issue is today. What, what what happens, you know, and and I say that you know a correctional facility should be a place where you correct people, help to correct people, mm -hmm. not penalize people, mm -hmm. um, because you know we all have made some type of mistake in our life, uh, but we all deserve chances. Absolutely. And so I, I was given a chance. Absolutely. I've not I've not always been, you know. Brother Charles, I've been Charles, I've been CC, you know. So tell us about some of your deepest concerns for the city of Boston sure. today. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, Lolita. Um, one is education. I am, uh, I think education is, is so much, uh, the services are so much needed in our schools, uh, particularly quality schools. I believe that there should be quality schools in every community. And the reason why is that our, our children, uh, that's our future. Mm -hmm. We can't turn our back on our future. If, if Boston wants to be this world-class um, city going into the future, well, we need to invest in our future. And our future, those are our children. There's no reason why we should be playing a game of chance with our children, um, putting them in a lottery mm -hmm. that they might you know, be placed in a tier one school or, yeah. or, or high performing school when others are not going to make it. That's not fair. Every one of our children need the, the, needs equal access and we need to close the achievement gap. And I have a fantastic educational team that has a beautiful plan and I know it will work. Okay, uh, I believe also that we need equal schools across the board, so I'm glad to hear you say mm -hmm. that. Uh, what are some of the main concerns that you see right now in this new educational um, program that they're Im trying to implement here in well, the city it, of Boston? Well, it doesn't address quality schools. Mm -hmm. We've been fighting for quality schools since the 1700s with um, Prince, um, Prince Hall. Seven, since the 1700s, quality schools, quality schools. If we have quality, when we have quality schools, mm -hmm. then um, we, we, will, we don't have to do as much transportation busing mm -hmm. now we could cut transportation in half easily and then take that money and put it back into the schools the resources in the school the computers in the schools you have other communities that have brand new commu um, computers Newton South Newton North mm -hmm. um, they have the resources our children want to be inspired to go to school open up the book and be able to see themselves in the book. They want to be able to walk around the city and look at names that are on buildings and identify with those names, whether you're um, black, whether you're Latino, whether you're Asian. You need to be able to identify yourself. And I'll say that if I was to take a picture of you in a crowd and I gave you the picture and you looked at that picture, the first thing you would look for is you. 
Someone else if you don't see, and if you don't see, you're going to look for somebody who you can identify with. But if you don't see yourself, nor if you can identify with someone in that picture, mm -hmm. you're not interested. Mm -hmm. Our children need to become interested in the schools. And it, and it starts with the schools, it starts with the parents, mm -hmm. and then it comes with the resources, the leadership, the teachers, the principals. Mm -hmm. We have to work together. And that's why unity builds a strong, strong community. community. Yes. Tell, tell us, what are some of the main contradictions that you see in this tier proposal that the school department recently uh, well, spoke I, I'm, about? Well, you know, life to me is real simple. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. We don't need, what we need is one good school that's the model, and then all the other schools are like that school. We shouldn't have, and when I say tiers, some people might not know what the tier one is, a, a high performing school, and then you, it's, let's say an A school, and then you have a B school, then you have a C school, then you have a D school. No, you want all A schools. When children go to school, they should always start off with an A plus, mm -hmm. an A plus. Not a, you don't start a child off at, with a C or a D. You don't do it. You start them off with the best because our children, they're the best. They're our future. How would, you, uh, how would you involve parents in this process? And how do you think parents should view this? If, if my child had to go to a level four school, which is the worst of the worst, as a parent, well, your what child, do you, what your, do you child, your child doesn't feel? have to go to um, a, a number four. Your child should go to that tier one school. Okay. However, you need to advocate for your child. Right. And your child needs to see that you're advocating for them. Now, we understand that in today's society, the economics is really um, bad. Mm -hmm. We understand that some parents are working two and three jobs, mm -hmm. mother and father. Yes. We understand that. So then that means the city of Boston has to understand those issues that are addressing those parents. So okay, so the, the parent wants to be, um, get involved, they can't during working hours. Well, let's, let's have other days that they can be involved, like on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, have a parents' teachers meeting, the monthly parents' meetings, that, should, that, that can happen. Well, they don't always have to be during work hours or right after work hours at five o'clock because some work the midnight shift. Again, working two hours, well, let's do a Saturday. Yeah. It doesn't, our, children, our future, our future is, is, is so precious, mm -hmm. and I don't see how we turned our back on our children. I don't see how we allow them to go astray. Parents, teachers, principals, I don't see. Yeah, and also our elected officials. Well, that's, a, that's another story. I'm not here to... Um, to, to talk negative mm -hmm. about any individual. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to talk about solutions. I don't want to have paralysis by analysis. <laughs> I want to talk about solutions. And that's what we need to start talking about mm -hmm. is solutions. We, not, we need to start speaking truth to the perceived power. We need to start action. Stop mm -hmm. talking and start doing. I do something called a pop drop. What is the pop drop? What is the pop okay. drop? Okay, well, I have my son mm -hmm. who attends the John D. O'Brien School. Um, I have his schedule. I've ha I have a relationship with the school that I can come.